Good evening, and I'll call to order the Wednesday, June 27, 2018 meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. First tonight, we have um, voting on the minutes of June 13th. We have two sets of minutes, um, one for our regular meeting, one for the executive session. I'll make a motion to accept the executive session. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. So moved. Okay, so the minutes for the regular meeting of June 13th. I read them. They seem in order. I'll move to approve them. Second. Um, I had one, a couple typos, but one kind of substi substantive uh, correction that I'd like to make on page 10. Um, we were talking about the Helmus Circle project and, and actually um, voting the order of conditions. And it says right in the middle of the page, a stormwater management plan can be required to report, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, I think that should be changed to the homeowners association can be required to report to the con um, yearly on stormwater management and maintenance. So I'll just send these down for Susan. Um, Court, you want to send that to Jen? Do I need to amend the motion um, to approve with corrections? Sure. Maybe. All right, I'll so move. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right, next we have other business. Discussions and comments on the request for proposal for Tony Andrews Farm. And we have um, Peter Johnson Staub, our assistant town manager here to talk to us about that. Show off. We're getting there. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Thank, thank you for uh, giving me some time. I know you folks always have a lot on your agenda, so uh, I appreciate the time and I won't take up too much of it. I have probably about five minutes to give you an overview of the request for proposals, and then I certainly welcome your input, your thoughts, your comments, etc. Uh, so just to start from the beginning, beginning, I know the Commission is well aware, but for the members of the public particularly, um, the Andrews Farm parcels were acquired for conservation, agriculture, and open space. Uh, and uh, with respect to the farm parcels, the the acquisition actually also includes house lots, and those were taken under the care and control of the Board of Selectmen for the town's general inventory. Um, but as you all know from uh, participating in the town meeting, certainly the emphasis of the acquisition uh, was to continue farming the parcel. That's the message that we received loud and clear from town meeting and from the community is that they want the parcel to continue to be farmed. So what um, I have shared with the commission, my first pass, it is very much a rough draft, rough draft, and it's very much my first pass. I have already had some good feedback from some staff, and I um, am just beginning to get input from uh, the Agricultural Commission and, and now the Conservation Commission. Uh, so the draft is a work in progress and will continue to evolve. Um, the care and custody of the farm parcels lies now with the Conservation Commission. However, there was a town meeting vote to transfer care and custody to the Agricultural Commission. Uh, that will take place sometime over the next year. The conservation restriction is now, we believe, in final form, and it rests with the um, Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, and we expect approval of that any day now. So the timeline for, uh, for the request for proposals, and this is a request for proposals, obviously, to lease the farm to a, a private party, a farmer, to, uh, to farm it. And the, the town now has a license agreement with Jeff Andrews. He's continued to live on the property at 394 Old Meeting House Road, which is lot A2. Um, so he's living there, and he's farming the property uh, through November of this year. And we therefore are hoping to have a lease in place uh, by November 1st of this year, um, or very close to it. 
Uh, I met with the Agricultural Commission actually for the second time on Monday. There were a couple of uh, potentially interested farming uh, individuals representing either themselves or a, a farm or an organization interested in uh, submitting a proposal. So uh, we had a, a good dialogue and, and got some good feedback on the RFP at that meeting on Monday. My goal is to have uh, a, a refined and uh, sort of final proposed RFP for the selectmen to discuss on August 6th so that we could advertise it shortly thereafter and receive proposals back from interested parties by September 18th, um, which is a pretty tight timeline to then um, evaluate the proposals, make an award, uh, and, and have the lease in place for November 1st, but that's, that's our goal. Highlights of the uh, proposed request for proposals. Uh, I drafted it with the goal in mind, the, you know, the clear one paramount goal of setting up the, the circumstances and situation to promote the viability of long-term farming at the parcel. Um, so that's, that's the priority that underpins the, the whole, uh, all of the, the request for proposal as I've drafted it. Um, in order to achieve that objective, uh, obviously it's not easy to make a lot of money farming, uh, particularly in New England. So I am looking to minimize the costs and the requirements that we place on the farmer as part of this lease in order to promote that viability. Um, that said, there are, you know, there are obligations that, that will be placed on the farmer in the interests of the town and in compliance with the conservation restriction. Um, so the, the farmer, uh, the lease will require that the farmer comply with the conservation restriction. Uh, that includes maintaining access to the open space uh, of the abutting parcel that is owned by the 300 committee. Um, and the other sort of big issue that, that needs to be addressed in the, in the RFP is the house lots. And certainly, uh, I think there seems to be a pretty broad consensus that the, the 394 house lot, A2, um, I should probably, this would probably be a good time to show the imagery here. So this is the, this is the entire parcel with the, um, in green is the town property, Andrews Farm, and in yellow outline is what is owned by the 300 committee. <clears throat> and then the house lots that have been, uh, that have been carved out, this lot A3 is the original farmhouse here, and then the, this is a garage, and these are three sheds, or outbuildings as we call them, and then this is Three, and this, this, I should say, the old farmhouse is 398 Old Meeting House. Lot A2 is 394 Old Meeting House, and that's where Jeff Andrews has been living um, and is living today. So the consensus is that in order, to, again, to make the farm viable, it's very helpful for the farmer to have affordable housing on site. So this lot A2 is included in the lease as I've drafted it. Um, much less straightforward and clear is what to do with lot A3. On the one hand, there, the outbuildings there are needed, or at least outbuildings are needed by a farm operation, obviously. These particular outbuildings are in pretty rough shape, so whether uh, it would be best to keep them or, or not is an open question. Um, and I've heard different, different opinions on that. And then there's the house itself. Uh, I feel pretty strongly that the town is not best served by leasing that house to a tenant. A couple reasons for that. One is the condition of the building and the costs to the town that would be required in order to bring it up to a standard where it could be leased. But also, the, the, whether it's the, uh, the farmer that's responsible for sub letting it to a tenant or the town directly, leasing it to a second tenant, there's just a lot of time and aggravation and a lot that can go wrong in a landlord-tenant relationship. And uh, certainly the town does have leases that we manage, 
So we know from experience the, uh, the, the time commitment that that entails. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't feel that it's necessarily in the town's best interest or the farmer's best interest to have to spend the time and energy that would be required to manage uh, a tenant relationship. So <coughs> there are a number of options that, the, uh, that we'll be discussing with the community and ultimately the Board of Selectmen will decide um, whether to include that lot uh, with the lease one option would be to include the lot but not include access to the residence, to the house itself. Uh, the house could potentially be demolished. That's one option. Another option would be to not include that lot in the lease uh, and to explore a sale of the lot for, and whether that's just a, a private sale for a residential purpose with the funds being earmarked to the farm to make investments in the farm to promote the long-term viability of the farm um, or, you know, again, to retain it uh, and allow the farmer to access the, the parcel but not to access the house itself. So those are, those are issues to be discussed and to be determined. Now in terms of uh, how do we go about selecting the farmer, who's, you know, what's the best entity or individual to lease the, the farm to. And, and as you may know, the town has a lot of latitude to define the criteria that we use to select. Uh, and in this case, certainly I'll, uh, it, it will be my recommendation that price is not primary among those criteria. Um, in fact, the way I've drafted the, the RFP, the, the, the rent would be set at $1 per year, and there would be a price evaluation in uh, only in the sense of we are asking, I've, it, as drafted in the request for proposal, asked the respondents to identify whether there would be any investments required of the town for equipment or non-residential structural improvements. Anything that we have to do to the house is under, as I understand it, as I'm advised by town council under landlord tenant law, the town's responsible for delivering the house, the residential house, in habitable conditions. So those will be the town's, the town's costs. But in terms of the outbuildings, um, we're asking the respondents to identify what improvements they would require the town to make, if any. And we could use as an evaluation criteria, you know, obviously the town wants to minimize our costs. So a proposal that has, that says we can handle any building improvements and any acquisition of equipment we can handle it on our own, that would be a, a highly advantageous proposal from that standpoint. Um, so the criteria that, that I've outlined, and again, welcoming input from all quarters, the applicant's years of experience farming, just number of years, and then the quality of the applicant's experience. And the way that I've defined that is, is the experience as the, the manager director of the farmer, in other words, they, they either own it or they're, they're leasing it and it's soup to nuts their responsibility as opposed to someone who works on the farm and is, you know, more limited in what their responsibilities are and reporting to someone who owns and manages the farm. Uh, the business plan is one of the criteria. The RFP uh, is fairly detailed in uh, the requirements of the respondent to identify um, all of the, you know, we, I've outlined all the elements that need to be identified, uh, articulated in the response, uh, and so we would be evaluating those business plans. Um, similarly, the land management plan is, is fairly detailed in what the respondents are required to provide. We would evaluate them on those, on that land management plan. Uh, I mentioned the town subsidy would be an evaluation criteria, and lastly, the applicant's financial reserves. So again, where the town's interest is, we want to select a partner that's most likely to succeed for the long term in farming the property. What financial reserves does the farmer have to, um, to purchase equipment, to get loans, to deal with unforeseen circumstances, lost revenue, et cetera? Uh, and a respondent that, has, that, has a str that can demonstrate that they have a strong financial position, some cash reserves or a letter of credit is, you know, going to be more likely to succeed. So the approval process, uh, 
Once the RFP is issued and responses are received, the town manager will be appointing an evaluation uh, committee. Uh, we will be looking for um, representatives on that evaluation committee. Uh, I've asked Jen if she would be willing to serve, and she's indicated that she is willing. The Agricultural Commission will um, be asked to designate a representative, and then we will be looking for some individuals who don't have any connection to potential respondents who may have uh, agricultural expertise. Uh, so we have some ideas about some folks from out of town that might be able to help us with that. That evaluation committee will make a recommendation to the town manager for the most advantageous proposal. The town manager will select uh, and make the final decision as to uh, the party to be awarded, but the lease will need a final approval from the Conservation Commission because you have care and control of the farmland and the Board of Selectmen because they have care and control of the house lots. Um, so that will be a yes or no uh, to award a lease to the party selected by the town manager. So I think that, yeah, that's all I have. Uh, and again, I welcome your, um, your questions or your, your thoughts and comments on the draft RFP. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we have people on the board with questions. Betsy? So um, I was going to get back to you, which I didn't, but I will. I, I see I have time. Mm -hmm. I, I got involved with some other stuff. But um, I'm just wondering, are, are you going to ask for references where, where you can call up and Yes, find? absolutely. OK. Yep. Anybody else down the sound? No, or I don't. I have, I have a plot in the back of my mind, but I won't bring it up. All right. Mark? <laughs> um, Did you say a thought yeah. or a plot? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to oh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Okay, Jamie has a question. <coughs> this doesn't go before um, town meeting. <coughs> no. No. I have some small questions, yeah. and I could just pass them on to you if you like. Um, Either way, if, you know, if you think the public might be interested, by all um, means, fire away. Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll see what you think. Okay. Um, in the section you call technical proposal, I guess that's where you're asking for the business plan. Yep. And there's an item in there, description of any support required from the town to improve, replace structures, or supply equipment, et cetera. And I was wondering if you, we would want to um, specify is, whether that's a one-time thing or... Um, <coughs> yep, I good. I told you they're small. Yep, good um, point. And then there are a couple places Places. One is in this um, matrix of the evaluation criteria, the um, second version you sent us. Uh -huh. um, and it relates back to, on my own, um, I'm sorry, I can't find in the text where it's, it's mentioned, but um, for the land management plan, um, you recommend including a reference to um, you know, under, um, consistent with the goals and understanding the requirements, demonstrating an understanding of the requirements. And um, I was thinking that they, I know there's a reference somewhere to acknowledging the, the conservation restriction, but I thought perhaps we might want them to also demonstrate some understanding of the purpose of that. Okay. I mean, like what, what aspects of it are relevant? Yeah, to what aspects their, are relevant and, um, to their operation? Yeah. And, right. um, and other than that, just um, little things that I can pass on to you. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Very very small. I'm an inveterate editor. So. <laughs> I need it. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, anything else, Jen? Do you have anything? Okay. Not at this time. I'll <coughs> take the comments I have to, to Peter and CC. Thank you. There, um, so I'll be making a, a number of uh, revisions. I've actually made some already uh, and hoping to have it posted to the website uh, by the end of next week. Great. So Great. the public will be able to get a copy and have a look as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. 
Thank you, Peter. All right. Peter, can you put the lights on as you go on? Since you seem to know how to do it so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next we have request for a continuance under a notice of intent. The 300 Committee Land Trust, care of Alexandra Zolo, 0 Gifford Street, map 38-09-002-002C, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to replace the boardwalk and the existing footprint and install an educational exhibit panel and associated clearance. Yes, Madam Chairman, uh, the applicant is requesting a continuance until August 8th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right. Request for determination of applicability. Um, here, in, for these types of applications, a negative determination is what's favorable to the applicant. It means that you do not have to go to the next level of review. What you've submitted is sufficient. Cornelia Antonellis, 17 Bower Lane, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to pump and fill existing septic system and replace with Title V sewage disposal system. Yes, Madam Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion among the board? Any comment or questions from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Next. Um, Stephen and Nicole Meal, 30, 375 Shorewood Drive, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to construct a new garage pump and remove existing septic system and replace with Title V sewage disposal system. Yes, Madam Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until July 11th. So, so moved. Second. Oh, a continuance? Yeah. Okay. The 11th? July 11th. July 11th. July 11th. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any comments? Uh, all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. So moved. <clears throat> okay. Continued request for determination of applicability. Robert and Mary Jane Kaplan, 197 Kunameset Circle, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to Vista Prune according to FWR 10.1810B. <clears throat> yes, the applicant is, the staff is recommending uh, a negative two in the state in the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. I'll bet the applicant's recommending that too. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions from the board? Anything from the public? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. So moved. And Kevin Dunn, 27 Fells Road, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to Vista Prune according to FWR 10.1810B. Uh, staff is recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right, now we move on to hearings under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. All right, so first up for the NOIs. Town of Falmouth, Department of Public Works, care of Jim McLaughlin. Chappaquoy Road, map 24-06-03-000, and map 24-06-04-000. West Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to repair the currently failed seawall and stone revetment that borders Chappaquoit Road and associated excavating and grading. Thank you, Madam Chair. My Great. name is Jim McLaughlin, town engineer. And we have uh, two notices. I, I know that this is the, the first of two. Um, both are uh, prepared by uh, Clyde Coastal 
And uh, so Trey from Applied Coast will be going through a presentation on each of them. Um, Chappaquoit Road is uh, uh, a section of public road where the, the uh, seawall has uh, um, failed and the pavement has failed. And we're requesting permission to uh, restore that. And uh, on Salt Pond, we're looking to uh, restore the inlet there and improve the uh, uh, tidal flow in and out of the, uh, the pond. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions after uh, Trey's presentation, as, as Trey will also. So I'll just turn it over to Trey and let him. Uh, okay. Trey, so thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, once again, I am Trey Ruthman from Applied Coastal Research and Engineering. Uh, our first project that we're looking at is uh, Chapel Point Road. Uh, this project is a continuation of the emergency project that the town of Falmouth undertook in 2016, or 2012. Uh, on the plan, you can see the uh, area here, the darker area, this area was repaired after uh, emergency damage, uh, similar damage to what's occurring now. Uh, this damage is occurring uh, due to the kind of uh, loss of uh, the beach in front of it. The structure was built approximately 70 years ago, uh, at which point the beach was much higher. The beach is lower down. Uh, the original design of the concrete seawall and revetment uh, was never anticipated to have the beach lower to the extent it is. As the beach is lowered, the revetment has fallen down and crumbled. Uh, but the bigger issue is that uh, base of the seawall uh, has become exposed. So actually, if you go to the seaward side of it, down the beach at low tide, you can actually see the base of the seawall and actually stick your hand up behind it, which is why we're losing the roadway as it crumbles down and it gets sucked out into the ocean. Um, the project extends from uh, the town uh, beach parking lot here northward uh, through the section that has already been repaired uh, up to the boundary of uh, the next parcel up, which is owned by uh, the Robert Zion Trust. Uh, the reason we're including the emergency repair section is if any stones have been moved over that time, uh, it'll allow the revetment to be uh, repaired, uh, but also just to, the existing section of the revetment will be uh, dismantled slightly just to allow the part of the revetment to be weaved together as it comes together. Uh, the proposal is to remove the armor stones uh, that currently exist in front uh, from the seaward side, so from the roadway side. Uh, we can excavate down and put a new base layer, uh, including geotextile base, and then three to four ton armor stone. The armor stone will run up to about the existing grade of the roadway, which is approximately eight feet off the beach. Uh, the existing concrete cap on the top will be removed. Uh, and then behind, we'll drive a sheet pile down roughly 17 to 18 feet. Uh, that'll prevent the toe of the roadway from continuing to wash out. Uh, on the crest of that, we'll resurface the roadway and put a wood guardrail in uh, to DOT standards. Uh, the repairs will look very similar to what's out there in the repaired section. Uh, it'll just take the repairs southward along the beach. Uh, the resource areas that we will impact uh, with this project would be uh, coastal and barrier beaches, uh, coastal bank, which would be actually the revetment itself, and then land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, the revetment will be actually constructed within its existing footprint, so it won't have any adverse impact to the existing beach system. That won't trap any extra littoral sediment or cause any sand starvation, uh, updrift or downdrift of the structure. Uh, by covering up the revetment, we'll actually reduce wave reflections off the structure, uh, using the revetment to kind of dissipate that energy. So we anticipate uh, no adverse effects during high water events where you might have a storm wave reflection off the structure. Uh, relative to land coastal storm and flowage, uh, the entire very beach under a 100 year storm would be uh, inundated anyways. Uh, the repair of the structure will not cause any changes to uh, overtopping that would naturally occur. Um, the, we've had uh, one comment uh, from DMF. Uh, they had no recommendations for sequencing, timing, or methods uh, on this project. Uh, so they have pretty much waved off for right now. The board has any questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mark. Yes. When was the uh, original repair done? Uh, the original repair was done in the uh, fall of 2012. 
That steel looks like it's pretty shabby already. The steel there is at, uh, weathering, especially on the upper side where it uh, gets kind of the constant uh, salt spray, and so it has uh, sufficient oxygen to actually oxidate. Uh, the pr any further proposed repairs. Uh, if you went with an epoxy coated sheet, uh, usually during the pile driving process, we would actually uh, strip off a lot of that. Um, the thought was to actually go back after it's uh, in place, uh, partially because it'll be an excavation on the landward side, and the steel could be uh, coated. However, in the environment, whether it's got an epoxy coat, a paint coat, or even you know tar or something like that, uh, it, it's steel. Uh, it will rust. So. You're going to do the epoxy coating or, or not? We will look at the cost. Uh, last time around, uh, epoxy coating uh, I think was triple the cost, and so it was not part of the original. That's uh, only a few years old, and it's falling pretty badly. It I'm is. I'm sure I you know. Yeah. Uh, really, worry. what we're looking for uh, with the steel is less structural stability on the upper side of it. Uh, the revetment's providing that. It's really what we're concerned about is the toe right. of the structure. Right. So. Once we're down below the toe, uh, the steel is continually submerged, so without oxygen, uh, steel doesn't rust as well. well uh, it's actually fairly stable. Mm -hmm. So- uh, it Comes through the top. It will come through the top of sand well, but we have the uh, geotextile coming up, up oh. the wall uh, with the revetment, so material behind the wall is actually encapsulated uh, through the geotextile, but also through the wall, That's good. Uh, the sheet pile. Uh, so really, the steel's main function is to protect the toe of the structure going into the future. Thank you. That's all. Peter. Um, two things. First, when would the construction uh, be completed? And secondly, how long do you think it will last before it needs reconstruction? Uh, construction uh, will be dependent on uh, permitting. Uh, after, if this project receives a order of conditions, uh, it will then need a Chapter 91 uh, license and also need a water quality cert uh, because they consider excavating uh, within the existing structure a dredging operation. Um, water quality certs are currently running on the order of nine months. Uh, so that would put it well into the spring. Um, I guess with just uh, talking with the town is that if it actually takes that long, this project would go out uh, the fall of the next year uh, for construction uh, to avoid summer traffic and congestion. That would also allow the town parking lot to be set up as a staging area uh, for construction equipment and actually stockpiling any extra additional rock, steel equipment that might be necessary. Uh, relative to the repairs, I'm expecting the repairs to last uh, another 50 years uh, mm -hmm. with the environment that it's in. Um, the biggest threats to the structure would be sea level rise, but uh, you know, the structure would already be overtopped during a significant storm event. Well, the last uh, repair lasted six years, right? No, uh, the first repair that was done was done strictly from the landward side. Uh, there was a hole there. They poured, uh, it was concrete, but poured flowable fill down in there. Uh, they did nothing to address actually the toe of the structure. Uh, so it was kind of a temporary solution, uh, which a temporary you know, lifetime. Uh, the goal with this <coughs> repair and moving forward be is a long-term repair so it can actually be sustainable by removing the existing revetment, reconstructing that, uh, actually stabilizing the toe by driving a sheet pile behind the existing concrete seawall. Uh, we've kind of stabilized the existing problems that are causing the failures currently, which is why we have our down to one lane of traffic. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'm set, thank you. Jamie. No questions. Betsy, your question. Kevin? No. Um, Courtney? <clears throat> this is a pretty dynamic area, and if it weren't armored, I suspect you'd see a lot of motion and a lot of loss of uh, um, area there, and perhaps even uh, turning that really into an island out there, what used to be Hog Island. Question, two questions. One, in your design, have you factored in accelerated Predicted accelerated sea level rise. With predicted if sea level rise, if we get on the upper end of those scales, uh, the entire causeway would be underwater, uh, which would present uh, various problems not just there but all around town. 
so in that level, no. I mean, the roadway would be then unviable, uh, I believe. A lot yeah. of the homes that, that road services out that way would also be in jeopardy. Uh, so I have a feeling there'd be a large discussion among town to deal with issues if we get to sea level rise on the kind of the upper end of the IPCC schedule. My second question was, have you, did you uh, try to involve the people that own the property beyond the line there on the map out in, we, in this exercise? We did. Uh, the original goal of the project was to take uh, the seawall repairs from the town parking lot all the way up until the road becomes private, which is a basically, if you've been out there, it's the, there's some stone pillars out there. It's approximately there. Um, we had approval from the property owners to the north, but the property owner immediately adjacent to the town lot on the seaward side has not signed on as being uh, part of the applicant for this project, so we cannot extend across their property at the moment. Um, obviously, looking at how the revetment to the north is faring, uh, it's likely that at some point that section of the roadway will have to be addressed, but currently without their approval, we can't uh, go ahead and take that on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you said you thought the permitting might take nine months, correct? Um, what yes. If, and what about once once you get underway, how long do you think that construction will take? Is there uh, any telling? I, I imagine once the it's gone through the public bid process and the contractor's on site, mm -hmm. I would expect construction to take no more than two months. Uh, uh -huh. It would actually be fairly rapid, uh, especially if they could start in the fall uh, while we still have warm weather and we still have relatively reasonable uh, uh, meteorological conditions so we don't have a large wave environment. They could probably uh, have very good production rates uh, working around the tide. Uh, on stages of high tide, they can also start driving sheet pile, so it's kind of they can work continuously, so it should be a fairly uh, tight process. The goal is to finish, if it was going to go out in the fall, before uh, asphalt plants close down in the fall uh, for the winter, so that way the entire project could be done. Uh, if something, uh, happened to delay the project uh, and went out late fall. That's the biggest threat is that the roadway you know, could be cut and it would be a gravel surface until the spring uh, when it could be paved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, does this address all of the issues along that coast with town-owned road? It does not. Uh, it addresses from the beach parking lot up Starting here at the beach parking lot up to this line, which is the first house that mm -hmm. you run into as you're running north. Uh, this beach on the seaward side is owned by the town. Uh, once we cross this line, uh, the beach becomes private. It's actually owned. Okay. Uh, we don't That's where the, there used to be an osprey pole? Yeah. There? Yes. Is that one? Yeah, okay. Uh, we don't have permission from the property owner to proceed with the project beyond the property line. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three more properties running north, uh, which the town owns the roadway. But on either side of the roadway, it's, it's private. Owned by the private. Okay. Anything else from the board? I just have one quick question. Yeah. Trey, can you confirm uh, everything's going to be done from the road, right? Yes. They're not going to have any extra uh, machines. There'll be no equipment on the beach. Okay. Uh, there'll be obviously laborers uh, on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Applying you know, geotextiles and you know, yeah. guiding the, the equipment above, but uh, the goal is. Way it's written and the way they actually did the repairs is that we did not need to put any equipment on the beach. Okay, thank you. You're looking at me. I'll make a motion, close the hearing, and take it under advisement. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else from the board at this time? Uh, any questions or comments from the public? This is time for public comment if you would like to. All right. Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, it has to do with both. Um, do I have any green cards? Oh, yeah, butters, butters cards. cards. Uh, I'm waiting for the last 10. Uh, it was There's a lot for this project. There's actually like 135 abutters because we uh, run into Bowerman's Beach Association. Uh, I have 125. The rest I can drop off next week. I was going to scan them all. Okay. Uh, That's as long as Jen gets them. Yeah. Is Jen and I already talked about it. Okay. Okay. 
Would you All right. Tell us. So, our next uh, hearing is Town of Falmouth Department of Public Works, care of Peter McConnerty, Zero Surf Drive, map 47-07-027-000, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to repair the two stone jetties that protect the inlet to Salt Pond and associated excavating and grading. So, I gather you're presenting this yes. one as well. That's uh, great. Once again, for the record, uh, I'm Trey from Five Coastal here on behalf of the Town of uh, Falmouth Public Works Department. Uh, we're talking about uh, salt pond jetties. Uh, the, jetty, the inlet was moved to its current location in uh, 1944. Uh, at the time when it was constructed, the two jetties were a similar length. Uh, sometime before 1966, when the next aerial photograph we could find, uh, the western jetty was extended uh, to approximately 130 feet in length. Uh, the eastern jetty is roughly 90 feet in length. Uh, the reason it was <coughs> likely due to sediment uh, clogging the inlet uh, was horrible drift in this area due to the typical southwest wind in the summer uh, and fall is from uh, west to east, uh, which you can see if you actually go out to the structure, you'll see that there's a good sand fill on the updrift side. Uh, the inlet, currently just due to the small tidal prism that exists within Salt Pond, gets dredged uh, on average of four to five times a year. Uh, currently, I was out there today, and it needs to be dredged again. Um, part of the ongoing maintenance that goes on is that uh, there's a fair bit of disruption as they try to dredge, uh, so the stones get dislodged. But also, this structure has been in place for roughly you know, 70 years uh, and has a lot of wear and tear, whether it's nor'easters, typical storms, uh, maintenance, etc. Uh, the goal of the project is to reconstruct each jetty at the same length, uh, same height, same side slopes uh, as the existing uh, structures. The one key difference would be in the center of the channel, uh, the goal, it currently has a rock bottom or somewhat open, would be to actually uh, place former stones across the base of the inlet, uh, key them into the structure. By keying those structures, uh, those stones in, while they're doing maintenance to dredge, it would actually provide a hard bottom, uh, so it, uh, the inlet would be over dredged, uh, and also would prevent the armor stones on either side that are protecting the inlet from becoming dislodged as the equipment's doing its job. Um, uh, kind of providing a, a longer, longer term solution to this. Uh, this reconstruction process really won't change the current sediment dynamics uh, during north, northeast events or even easterly events. We get clogging uh, from seaweed and sand. That's still going to continue. That's all based on the tile prism of the pond. Um, the only way to be to adjust that would be uh, increased tidal prism, but due to the way the system is laid out, uh, that isn't really feasible. We'd have to move the inlet to another location, uh, which it was historically, uh, which currently has houses on top of it. Um, this project will uh, touch the resource areas of land under the ocean, uh, land under estuaries, under the Falmouth uh, bylaw, Barry Beach, coastal beach, and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, the entire structure is staying within its existing footprint. Uh, we're not expecting any changes to the bottom topography in the long term. Uh, the sediment transport dynamics along the coastline of Falmouth, uh, or uh, changing coastal storm flowage uh, due to the low-lying nature of uh, surf drive and the structures, uh, which are rough, going to be at route elevation five, which is approximately the roadway elevation, uh, which is what they're currently designed at. Um, any questions from the board? Thank you. Jen, did DMF comment on this track? Yes. Uh, we actually got two comment letters. We have a comment letter from National Heritage. Uh, they were commenting relative to piping clovers and least turns. Uh, they asked for a time of year restriction from April 1st to August 31st. Okay. Uh, DMF also commented uh, relative to habitat for shellfish, uh, <coughs> specifically bay scallops, alewife, uh, white perch, and American eel. They requested a time of year restriction from March 15th to June 15th. Uh, however, they said work could be conducted uh, within the time of year restriction under the direct supervision of the shellfish constable. Okay. Courtney. No questions. Kevin. No questions. Betsy. No questions. Jamie. If you address this, I didn't catch it. No plans to widen the inlet? No plans to widen the inlet. Actually, widening the inlet would actually increase the amount of sedimentation that goes on by reducing the flow of 
the flow of velocity is coming out. Um, so. Okay. That's all. No questions. No questions. Peter. No questions. Well, that was easy so far, anyway. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. All right. Nothing else from the board? Anything from the public? Anyone would like to comment on this question? All right. Hearing nothing. Um, all those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you very much. And please don't forget the abutters cards. They're important. No problem. Uh, the abutter cards for this are already in the Oh, they are. Good. Just send me digital version. Right. Oh. Send him in. He sent a, he gave us a scanned. Oh, it's a scan of the, oh, there they are. Okay, yeah. Great. Thank you. I like them. Hmm? I like them that way. Yeah. It takes up much less room in the drawer. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so Nine months here. the 300 Committee Land Trust has been continued to August 8th. Yeah. So we move on to Peter and Ann Brundrett, 27 Sunfish Lane, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to raise our ACE and rebuild the existing cottage, upgrade the septic system, construct a driveway, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Good evening, Tom. Good evening. Thank you. Um, to, I should say, that it's to partially reconstruct because the, uh, it's not to raise completely. Uh, they do want to retain the existing foundation. They don't, they don't want to have to keep the whole thing. But the property is located here on the south end of uh, Pond, 47,500 square feet. A uh, small two-bedroom house uh, built in there on 1920. A uh, lot has frontage on Sunfish Lane, uh, which is down here. The address is Sunfish Lane. But at the moment, no physical access. If you've been up there, there is a small old way that cut through here. Um, the old concrete mixer in the way right here. And then it goes out to Jugat Road. And so I'll stay up front at the end intent of this, the, the timing is to build the uh, new driveway to the house first. Maybe you have a letter in your file um, from an abutter uh, requ requesting that that be clarified. So I'll say that up front. I'll say, I'll say one other thing up front that we uh, filed with the uh, natural heritage people and have not heard back, so we'll expect to requ request the continuance. Mm -hmm. um, not expecting it to be closed tonight. Um, <clears throat> Crooked Pond is in a zone two. The wetland bordering the pond therefore has a 100 foot zone A setback, which I've highlighted right through here. Um, there are also various other setbacks. Uh, the pond itself has a 75 foot setback. Uh, a zone and then the, the B zone <coughs> runs through there. There's a wetland at the south end of the lot down here. There's a 50 foot A zone and then the remaining B zone in this location. There are two areas uh, covered by the Natural Heritage Program and one is, seems to be centered around the pond. This uh, line right through here toward the pond, about 100 feet wide from the pond. Um, is uh, one of the priorities, uh, I guess that's number 221. Then there's another habitat area which is um, narrower along the pond but then 
goes more upland. Um, and as I said, we filed with the Natural Heritage. I don't know what's there. We haven't heard back from them yet. Um, so other than this driveway coming in, a dirt driveway, uh, turnaround area, the house, small area of lawn, a patio, um, some lawn area up here, horseshoe, horseshoe area right here. Other than that, the area is uh, naturally measured in. Uh, so um, this area, building the um, access from Sunfish Lane, will come up here between the two uh, the A and the B zones on the two sides is up through here and uh, most of this is not in the natural heritage um, area either but when you get to this point this this new driveway is in the zone A this amount of uh, expansion of the house is in the zone A um, so I have a, a calculation up here uh, and, and so what we've done is planting this air, this old driveway, which is certainly much closer to the pond and the resource area than the new little bit of driveway here. This area of the driveway will be planted with the native vegetation. Um, and that amount right to there balances the increase in coverage in the zone A. Uh, by the house and this driveway. Um, and then, as I said, this part of the driveway is uh, not in the natural heritage, except for I think a little bit at the end right here, and not within either A or B zones of the conservation uh, regulations. So, um, through my notes and see uh, this area here. We have one, two, three, four, five, about eight trees through here and one, two. Basically, this, this, uh, all of this slope will be vegetated with the native seed and uh, perhaps grass seed and perhaps wildflower mix. Uh, some native trees through here and then I have a note to allow it to uh, naturally revegetate with with shrub, the native shrubs through here, keep it free of any invasive plants. And um, this area that's uh, in the zone A, we have some more native trees planted through here. And, uh, <coughs> and I guess all of the all of the native shrub planting was up here, but this too we have some native trees, and and this all of this sloped area along the driveway will be allowed to revegetate naturally, you know, under under the canopy of native trees, allowed to revegetate with the uh, native um, native shrubs, and we have a septic system uh, up in this location uh, meets Title V requirements, uh, more than 100 feet from any wetland resource area. Uh, so that, that is the uh, proposal. <coughs> Any questions? Thank you. Jen. Tom, can you just go through your construction sequencing? Are you going to put the septic in and then build the road or build the road so you can do construction on the house and uh, then put the septic system in? The road first. I mean, the, the septic is made out of H20, but there's no point putting that in first just do the road from the road from here in so, they can so that'll on. be your construction access yes construction okay. access is coming from Sunfish Lane okay. through here and um, you know not 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 through this other area okay yes. um, and is there a reason for all the grading along the roadway or it well it, it is to make it not too steep to okay. slow erosion and also because it, uh, you know, we have the septic in here to get it up to this point. Uh, you know, we had started without this 
all of this grading. We started just with a pump chamber to mm -hmm. get a higher up, but then we, and that was before we had the driveway coming in this way, and I realized coming in with the driveway and not making that too steep, because I think it's still like 7 or 8% okay. as proposed, but then we can keep the septic as a gravity flow system and not as a pump okay. system. Okay, right. I was just curious. Yeah. Okay, and that's all that's the questions it. I have. Jamie, do you have any questions? I don't. Steve? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> having tried to approach the site from Sunfish Lane side, um, it, 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 the imagination shown in, in this roadway plan is, is uh, what makes you guys engineers, I guess. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I stood there and looked at it and tried to figure out how you were going to do that. After I talked to the pruitt, they explained that it was going to, it was going to be a new entrance. And, yeah. And uh, it's impressive. There's a lot of tree work out of the A zone. There's a lot of tree work in the A zone. I'm sure we'll be discussing that in much greater detail. Thank you. Thank you. Peter? No questions. Mark? No questions. Betsy? I have no, my, my only question was what Jen's question was. And well, sort of what your question was too. You just couldn't quite picture, like, couldn't picture yeah, it at all. That's fine. Kevin. Yeah. No. No, other than I wish I wish it had been identified as Digit Street. Digat. Because walking in from here was an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of described in the narrative. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think. The, the, the abutter there would not have wanted everybody coming in. Right. Courtney. No questions. Okay. I have one yeah. small request. It's, it's one of my picky ones, but um, since we're going to have to continue anyway, um, in the note on your plan, uh, it's next to, it's the lower one, next to the big lettering saying lot B. This is page uh, sheet two. Um, you're pointing to native trees to be planted, and um, it seems to me that there are going to be eight in the current driveway, and I think 12 down in the southwest part there. And I was just wondering if you could, in either one or two notes, either the one that's here or that, plus another one up top, indicate how many plant uh, trees we're talking about because I think that would simplify things at right. compliance. I should have because I had to, I didn't know myself right now. Okay. Thank you. Amazing. Yes, and so, um, well, we, yeah, we need a day, I guess, right? Tom, you submitted it to us on June 13th. Is that when you sent it to Natural Heritage? Yes. So they have 30 days from when they receive it. Right. So I put you on the 11th, but I don't think we'll have a response by then. Um, the room on the 18th, I'm going to be gone the first two weeks in August. No, you're not the 18th. Okay. Oh, absolutely. That's at, fine. At the request of the applicant, I move to continue this to July? July. No. Oh, Ju oh, July. July. July 18th, July 18th yes. July 18th. This is not my life. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Anything else from the board at this time? Any questions or comments from the public? On this all right. Um, all those in favor of continuing the hearing to July 18th, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Very good. It's quite a lot of no stone, no, nothing. Natural. Yes. <laughs> it's going to have to be 60 okay. feet long. Where's he taking us next? Ransom. <laughs> and I didn't get poison ivy. Hold those ransom. He's holding those ransom. Right. I know it's going to be short. Okay, short. okay next. We have Philip Zamor and Catherine Collinbow, 96 Ransom Road, Belmont, Massachusetts. For permission to replace 4,600 square feet of lawn with plantings, reconstruct and improve landscape areas around paths, steps, driveway, and plantings and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping.
again still. My name is Tom Bunker with BSS Design. Uh, I'm here representing uh, Philip Zamore and Catherine Colin Vaux uh, on this project, 96 Ransom Road, and with me is Rob Moody, landscape architect from Morgan Wheelock, who prepared the plan to basically prepare the design. So I'll get started with my crude drawings and better plans. Um, and I'll owe you an updated plan as I was looking at this. I realized I didn't have the flags, the wetland flags labeled on this. The LEC did, did flag the plans, but somehow I got left off. <coughs> uh, so we have this, this house, uh, you know, it's been the subject of you know, several filings by us. Uh, the house was rebuilt some years ago and then the septic system upgraded or maybe vice versa chronologically. Uh, and now the house, the house and the septic, the driveway are all staying the same, uh, but the landscape is being redone. So this was a, a hard plan to draw and convey and to stake on the property because it's kind of all over the place. What I've drawn here, um, well, I'll get started. We have the you know, Oyster Pond through here. Uh, coastal bank comes uh, way up, basically up to up to here. The, the coastal bank. Um, this purple line is another project that's uh, partially in the natural heritage um, endangered species. But on this one, we uh, sent that in, uh, and basically requesting an exemption because uh, you can. Um, expand an existing landscape in previously disturbed areas, and that's that's what's going on here. There's there's no no there's no expansion of structure or any hard pavement on this project. Um, so we have Coastal Bank here, wetlands around bordering the pond here. There's another wetland down here, and uh, needless to say, the A and B zones overlap, so that the entire property is at least in the B zone, and there are, um, and, and mostly in the A zones, there's a 75 feet through here, which is the setback from a, this is the furthest, furthest back A zone, the setback from a pond and a coastal bank right through here. But um, on the plan that I sent, it might not be totally clear, we labeled some things, but the, the stones and what I've marked in orange here, roughly showing what's being removed uh, some of the trees are labeled to be transplanted. There's walks even out there. They're just, you know, flat landscape stones, um, irregular stones. They're taking out the walks, taking out this step, uh, actually taking off to rebuild this one one uh, sort of deck stoop area of the house. Um, some steps, some stones here. They're going to remove a tree, some shrubs. Uh, and more of these stones are going to be removed, uh, and yeah, some some of these stone the stairs going down here, basically to make it all um, more regular steps and, and, and better better stepping on it. So that kind of shows the removals of what's coming out, and uh, briefly colored in. And this is hard to look, hard to ascertain exactly, except. You see it in color, um, but if you look closely, the irregular shaped pieces are stones. The circles are shrubs. You can also tell because I have a little key here. The irregular shaped ones with uh, dark circles, do dots in them, are each dot represents a riser or a step. So you kind of make out what's going here. I colored them in gray along here, and there be some trees coming in here and here. And basically, there's a, a lot of planting in there that I wasn't in a color because I knew Rob had a, a, a good plan to bring in. Um, so we have <clears throat> so there's an increase. Stones are hard to uh, measure the area, but I figured there's about an increase of 750 square feet of 
more stone and probably is mostly right in here. There's a, a patio, sort of a patio uh, with a fire pit. About 750 square feet of floor coverage in, in zone A, which would require 2,250 square feet of native shrub planting. Uh, and uh, m more than that is proposed on this plan. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it with that introduction and then Rob can talk more about plants and whatever else is going on there. Okay, thanks, Tom. Landscape Architects, and um, as, as Tom had mentioned, we're um, looking to um, basically re replace, pretty much in place, the, the uh, stepping stones around the perimeter of the house with some uh, additions to the, or replacement of some of the landings, and then really look to fill the site with kind of native and naturalized uh, plantings and reduce the lawn. The client is really uh, kind of adamant that it, this feel less like a mown lawnscape. So um, really a lot of the, the native straight species varieties would be... Excuse uh, me, I'm sorry. Can you take the microphone with you when you move away sure, okay. you know, from the podium? Thank you. It's for the t TV audience. So really a lot of the, the straight species native varieties would be clustered in some of these voids. There is along the pond edge, there are some native uh, clutter of a berry type in, in kind of sporadic areas and we'd look to fill in the rest of those areas with um, the native shrub plantings. Um, in addition, we look to, I think, so we're proposing this kind of stepping stone area around uh, a natural, natural stone fire pit um, with planted joints, and we'd look to really kind of engulf that with um, like uh, low native ground cover type grasses, but also um, some some low woody <coughs> shrubs. And then as you go around to to this front area, it would be uh, a little more garden type plants that would be kind of beyond that. Uh, I guess beyond that requirement. So you would have some cultivated varieties of uh, perennials and shrubs there. And then along the perimeter, some, some uh, native trees. Uh, I think that's kind of the, the broad overview of the, of the planting portion. Would you mind um, putting up your photographs on the easel sure. for a minute? And a sense of that, and I gather that's okay. It's nice. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's kind of a nuanced thing that we're doing. Uh, there are existing stepping stones similar to this, but it's a little bit of a kind of a hodgepodge of different materials, and um, so we're looking to uh, craft into the hillside a little bit more comfortable uh, steps, and I think there's three or four different types of stones there. Um, and really kind of put things back in place um, with the exception of this, this little area here. Um, and then all of the paving stones would be uh, either lawn, uh, lawn in some areas, but in other areas like a, a planted ground cover. Um, and then really looking along these hillsides to get this kind of full native type appearance and, and effect with not only um, the native shrubs, but also this understory of ferns and, and uh, herbaceous material. Great, thank you. Jen. Just a couple of things. Um, sir, and I forget your name, I'm sorry. Rob. Rob, I met with you and a colleague? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, I was kind of at a disadvantage because 
one, we're going to have to take your pictures for the open meeting. Um, oh, right, but compliance with the open meeting law. So if you want to email those photos to me, that would be best. Sure. Okay. And second, if you take the photos down, I don't have that wonderful little legend of plants. I mean, I can take a really good guess at what some of the plants that you have on your plan are, but I need that plan with that legend. Yeah, see, I'm, I did, so I'm going to need to be able to look at that again with your legend um, so I can see what types of plants you have. And I thought when I had met with you, um, I, I may have missed it, but I, I thought um, on your plan it would be really helpful to me to have your setbacks on it from the pond, so the wetland setbacks, like Tom has his on his plan, if you could put those on your plan, that would be helpful to evaluate it. Okay. And just um, one thing, Tom, on your plan, I need your square foot difference. You're missing your, are you missing your, more or less your mitigation? And I understand that this is kind of difficult, so I mean, I would be fine with approximately. I mean, I, I understand it's very difficult to, go out and measure each and every one. I would never do that to your guys. Um, no one ever does that. Yeah, no. So Rob, just a quick question. Why aren't you removing the burning bush along the water? We would be happy to. Yes, I would be happy if you would remove it as well, as, as well as the tree. <coughs> that, would be, that would be great. <coughs> Um, and if we could just have that revised plan, and that way I can evaluate it a little bit more thoroughly. Okay. Um, and that was it. I mean, it's a it's a really nice design. I understand what you're trying to do. Um, I just have to be able to know what kind of plan to put in. Great. And the other thing is, anything that's presented at the hearing has to come into the file. Come into the file. So if that's new information. Um, we need a version that can go in the file. So you, um, I can, uh, Tom can give you our email address and you can email those to me you know, before the next hearing. Okay, okay. Um, that's it, Jen? Yeah. Courtney, have any questions? No questions. Kevin? No. Let's see. No, I think this is gonna be a great yeah. project. It was a little, it's a little bit of a challenge mm -hmm. walking around out there now. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say it's more, um, a hazard for people who live there, especially at night, mm -hmm. who are trying to get around. Yes, it is. Yeah. But it'll be, it's a beautiful sight, and it'll be nice. Jamie. Pretty aggressive, how long do you think it's gonna take? I'm just curious. Yeah, it's a month and a half. Nice. Steve? No question. No question. Peter, no? Mark, no. Wow. I don't have any questions either. Mm -hmm. Well, if nobody has any questions, I mean, I'd be fine evaluating. I mean, I get, I'm pretty sure I know what most of these little, I'd say 95% of what the symbols are. Um, if the board wanted to close the hearing, as long as that plan was submitted to me, so we yeah, have something. You, you can condition I'm fine. how you're yeah, going to deal with it. Yeah, I can condition so. that. So, Rob, if you could, uh, and I actually have that one. That would be great, and if you could send me those pictures via email and also a copy of the plan via email with the legend on it, that would be great. Thank you. And you want the wetland resources? Don't you want the setbacks? Setbacks. The setbacks. Oh. Yeah, a new new plan with the setbacks. Yeah, a new plan with the setbacks. That would be fine. So this all can be done without continuing it. Yeah, that'll be done without okay. continuing. Okay. We can condition all that. I'm fine with that. Okay. So I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it up. Did we go all the way down? Yes, yep. we yeah. did. Take it under advisement? Second. All right. But, I, but I, have a, I have a comment. Okay. And I was, I, yes. Tom, I want a new plan. Anything else as well? Little? I was so disappointed that Tom didn't give us a, a colored plan because we know he's capable. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's he never going to get plan. <laughs> free of that, there. is he? Yeah, he did the color room. No, no, you, you did it. You did it. Yeah, then you framed it and put a bow on it for him. Right. Tom's Van Gogh. Actually, he knows not to do that. 
Rob, thanks for giving giving us this. Tom Tom's effort was, uh, as you can see, <coughs> was very well received by the board. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else from the, the board? Anything from the public on this application? All right. Um, all those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. We're having a great night here. Hmm. If you can just clip that off and hand it to me, that would be great. Sure. Thank you. Oh, the not here. <laughs> hmm? No, we'll be. Uh, Edgewater. Good. All right. Now we have Stephen and Kelly Froya. 317 Edward Drive West, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to construct habitable space above the garage and associated landscaping. Through the house. The, the, the V zone goes through the house, and the Falmouth V zone goes just this, landward this, of the this porch the that's Falmouth. being added. Yeah. Uh, okay. For the record, my name is Tom Bunker, DSS Design. Uh, we prepared this plan for Stephen and Kelly Freya. That's it. Property is on Edgewater Drive West. 317 fronts on Eel Pond, which is tidal, and uh, there's a nice salt marsh area through here. Um, they have a licensed dock pier in Eel Pond, which needed to be fixed this spring after the ice damage. Um, there's an existing house in this location, been there been there a long time and uh, and a shed over here um, we have we went out there on um, grass pave type pavers that uh, you know, concrete concrete block with holes in them that catch water and sometimes allow grass to grow up through um, that we do have through here Velocity zone VE elevation 14 runs through the house. And there is, yes, a label down here, 25 foot Falmouth VE zone. The reason you can't find it is you said it's a 10 foot, so it's two and a half inches apart. You know, double the distance that you're used to looking for of Falmouth VE zone. So there's very little. We're here before you mainly because of the two things. Uh, one, this area above the garage, I want to add a um, add the you know, space above that so there's no increase in footprint area of the house due to that construction. Um, that's just the expansion of a uh, of the family room. In that location, there are no no new rooms being added. Um, in addition to that, so then we have what's being increased in footprint size is a little a front porch here that's only three feet wide, and then some steps coming down from it, uh, which 38 square feet of increase right here, 
We've counted in a, a platform for air conditioning, uh, which we're calling about 20 square feet, and uh, taking out that was a two-car garage, but it has only one door in it. The apron goes the full width, so we're taking out that little bit of the apron and you know, vegetating that. So the total increase is 41 square feet. It's in uh, zone A, so it's a, a three to one mitigation and 123 square feet acquired. So in the spirit of the last hearing, taking out a burning bush, we're taking out two rows of Sharon bushes right here, which are uh, quite, quite prolific in seed production when they're, when they're healthy anyway. So we're taking out these two rows of Sharon and adding uh, 141 square feet of native planting in this location. So we have 123 plus uh, you know, whatever, uh, 18 more square feet to make up for the two rows of Sharon's that are being removed. So we have that bit of planting right there, which is sort of on Coastal Bank, uh, adjacent to the Salt Marsh, which I think is a good location for it, kept away from the pine tree that's right there. Um, in the narrative, we talked about removing, uh, cleaning up some of the uh, rubble and trash here, and at least on the upland area, trying to uh, persuade the uh, Phragmites to go away. Um, when I was out there staking it, though, I realized that there's, a, there's actually a lot, a lot more shooting up than when I had been there last. Um, but still, at, at this time, I think he'll, uh, you know, maybe p pick at it on the upland side, but uh, uh, might be coming back to do a Phragmites eradication. But at, at this point. Uh, uh, pull up bittersweet, you know, cut some Phragomites, whatever you can around there, around the gardens and all. Uh, but do this planting to make up for this increase of, of uh, coverage at the uh, front porch. And that is the proposal. Thank you. Uh, Mark, any questions? No comment. Peter? No comment. Steve? No questions. Jamie? Nothing. See? No questions. No questions. Courtney. None. Wow. I'll move to close the hearing and take it down as wise. Second. All right. Anything else from the table here? No. Anything from the public? Anyone like to say anything? You can see a good thing when you, you know a good thing when you see it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this Tom Bunker night was a successful That's yeah. right. Tom it Bunker. was. Good it was, a, and so was the town of Falmouth. That town of Falmouth. Pardon me? Did we get a lump of coal or anything? No. <laughs> That's only Christmas. No, we get an orange no, tonight. No, no. Coal. That's in reserve. It's in reserve. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. So next we have request to extend the existing order of conditions. Valley Mead Country Club, 125 Falmouth Woods Road, Falmouth, Massachusetts, requests a three-year extension. Yes, Madam Chairman, uh, the staff is recommending a three-year extension for the Country Club. Mm -hmm. This was reviewed What's the project? under your bylaw only, so that's why you don't have a form to sign. We'll send a letter. What's the project? It's a golf course. Golf course. Oh, that, right. Okay. I mean, right, right. Um, they were relocating. Right, I remember now. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Unanimous. So much. nobody made a motion. No. I'll make a motion. Oh. No. I'm sorry. I'll make the motion. I'll okay. second it. Okay. All right. All those in favor of uh, uh, granting the three-year extension, say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. So moved. All right. Now we move on to voting orders of conditions. First, we have 104 Penzance Road. Okay, hang on one second. What's the first one? Penzance. Sending? Do you want to? Um. Madam Chair? Yes. I'm not on the quorum for these, but I plan to listen to the 
discussion, if that's all right with the chair. That's fine with me. Thank that's you. That's fine. So Susan will know to leave you off the, yes, thank the you. voting. I thought he was asking permission to uh -huh. No. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> what any sense of Madam Chairman, <laughs> there's something that I need to grab downstairs for You're one of these interesting. from Pat. I forgot to grab Can that. Break? Can we just do a recess real quick? Yes. Thank you. This uh, I have the forms, Susan, and you can have them so you can Okay, good. Care. So if we can just take a thirty minute recess. All right, we're gonna take a um, what? Four minute break? Yeah, I just have to that. So that Four we can minute? get something we need <laughs> so from the so office. Sorry, it was just that we didn't know what happened. That's fine. That's fine. Yes, it doesn't matter. 
Road. Um, this is uh, repairing of the seawall, and there's also placement of bio logs, and I believe we discussed um, relative to the plan that was submitted. I believe we discussed. An adjustment of the length of the biologs, is that right? Yeah, the biologs are only going to be 30 feet. Right. Instead of the whole thing. Okay. We discussed that. Yeah, so we're going to reduce the size of the biologs. I'll go out there with um, Dave Martin. Um, do we have to do a revised plan for that? He did do a revised plan. He did, okay. He did an updated uh, salt marsh uh, rebuilt, um, adding the stairs on the other side of the revetment and. We're only going 30 Replace. feet, uh, 30 feet from the stone revetment south, right. with the biologs. Not, okay. not just replacing uh, on the other side, the mm -hmm. ones that were there were unusable. Yeah, stairs yeah. on both sides. Yeah, yeah the stairs on both sides. Yeah, yeah. she's going to fix them. So Repair the stairs. But there were. That was the question. That's his thought. So is we check? I'm pretty sure he submitted a revised plan. Yeah. Oh. He's usually very good like that. I'm, I put, put a sworn I saw it come in. Pair of stairs, add stairs. Yeah, I don't have a Staff any other meet. notes. Yeah, and we'll meet out there with Bill Armstrong and Dave Martin and the property owner in the fall. They're not doing this project until the fall, so I'll meet out there for the placement of the biologs and the extent of the biologs. Yes. Okay, yeah, I thought Okay, great. Does anybody have anything else um, for the order of conditions? I'll make a motion to accept um, as one, discussed. One oh, sorry. Um, <coughs> got a motion. Oh, yeah. I made a motion, motion to accept as discussed. We did a second. I think you just seconded. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Try to keep together in the uh, sure. proceedings here. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right. Thank you. Next. Cypress Street. Yeah, Cypress Street. Um, I'm going to just start off by saying we have a recommendation from Hat Pat Harris, Associate Town Council, and it is a recommendation that comports with my sense of what should happen, and that is to issue a procedural denial because the application does not include every property owner affected by the project. Do you want to read her statement? Read that? Sure. Uh, per our discussion, the proposed project involves alteration of resource areas located within a private way. The applicant owns property on the northerly, northerly side of the way. Another landowner, Sandlin, owns property, property on the southerly side of the private way. Common law provides that McGordy and Sandlin each own a fee interest in the private way ex extending from their property line to the center line of the way, subject to an easement for passage unless otherwise provided in the title. Any NOI must be signed by all line, landowners with a property interest in the mm -hmm. proposed project. Any order of conditions must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, marginally referencing the source of title to all property owners. The Sandlins did not sign the Form C Notice of Intent or otherwise authorize the filing of the subject NOI, nor is their title reference included. I therefore recommend that the Commission issue a procedural denial under FWR 10.055A 
and 310 CMR 10.055A until such time as the Sandlands provide authorization for the project and title references. And that should be done without prejudice, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. I will make that motion. Oh, May I ask a question? I don't think I'm on this. Am I? No. Um, that was uh, your we question? have a motion. We need a second. We need a second. I second. All right, thank you. And does anybody have any? It's, um, it's a motion to issue a procedural denial without prejudice. Um, did I hear somebody down at this end of the table any comment or question? No. Ben. Yes, Kevin. Um, didn't we already issue one for the first half of the street? It was outside of our jurisdiction. The, the repairs that were done on the, the first section of the road we're just outside the commission's jurisdiction. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. All those in favor of issuing. I'm sorry, who seconded? Um, second. All those in favor of issuing the procedural denial, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. We need to do a full vote just uh, no. no. So I guess you would have said so if we needed to. <laughs> I could very easily overlook that. Uh, 51 One. Bryant Point Road. Um, I think I'm not on the forum for this. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I have nothing to say, but. <laughs> Go to it. And but does anybody else have anything to say on this? Jen or No, only that if Red Bud wasn't I have to look on the cooperatives list and I haven't had a chance yet that if Red Red Bud was not on the Cape Cooperative list, then she was gonna we'll switch it out for something else. Other than that, um, they did everything we they asked did, for. They did everything they asked for and they did a nice plan. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept this discussed. Second. All right. Any other comments or questions? All uh, those. I, I, oh, I, sure, Peter. I, uh, to Jen, uh, I have a note here. Did they locate the septic system on the drawing? Approximate location of septic system. So the septic system, if you look at the plan revised June 5th, they did locate the approximate location of the existing septic system. It's right off that first covered porch. Okay. Okay. Uh, and do the blue flags and uh, the engineer's drawing uh, eventually matched up? They did. And there was a discussion about maybe a railing Oh, a single rail fence along the edge of the plantings? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Peter. And did, did they uh, reduce the deck? They did, they did cut it off a they little bit. They did cut okay. a yeah, little section of the deck off. They rub out as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Anything else? Do you have trouble reading your learning? <laughs> did I make the motion? So I'll make the motion including Peter's suggestion what he said second including what Peter said <clears throat> all right anything else no all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed unanimous so moved 46 waterside drive this was well this turned into just a really big restoration planting scheme um sure did Oh, yeah. Because the septic system, the upgrade to the system was removed. So Wilkinson met with the staff. They, um, uh, he met Mark and Brendan. They kind of talked about the concerns that the staff have. Seth revised the plan, and the staff was happy with it. Is this a voluntary wetland, rest wetland restoration? We don't have any regulations that requires them to do wetlands. Yeah, I mean, but it's not so because of some kind of enforcement or enforcement no. left over. Wow. No. Isn't that I nice? mean, there are some com small, and those small. were outlined in the, in the presentation. Small things, right? Really small compliance issues, but um, no. 
Yeah, it's nice. It'll be it. It'll be a nice. It'll be a very very nice functioning project. Home, yeah. Okay, Susan. So, is the quorum everybody but Steve and me? Yep, Courtney, Benson, Mary. No, you're on. Oh, well, that's right. I am. I'm Courtney, sorry. Benson, Mary, Jamie, Kevin, Steve, I was stuck on the last one. <laughs> We're beyond that. We're beyond that. Do we have the motion? I'll, I'll make the motion. The motion to accept is discussed. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Terrific. 91 Bywater Court. Oh. Trees, trees in the trees with the mitigation planting. All right, hang on. I, I can't write as fast as you guys can think sometimes. Um, Peter had some great ideas about the protecting the tree. Uh -huh. We also are going to want to specify the spacing. Yep, I got that. One. Tighten up the spacing, add two, three, add two trees, hand dig expansions, no dense grade near oak in area one. Uh, our no dense grade is going to be a finding and a special condition because didn't he Wayne he, say they were doing it with no dense grade? We don't need dense grade. Yeah. Which I well, think you do, but I'm going to go with OK. And uh, was there a question in this one also as to certain things, whether they are or are not on the approved plant list? Yes. OK. And we will, we will condition approved plants. Okay. Anything else? Oh, Courtney. Um, I understand this commission's concern about dense grade, but you know, as a practical matter, you really do need a stable substrate, and it does perk. Um, and I think we should look at the whether we revisit it on this one or not. I don't care. But My recollection uh, is that he was maybe I have it confused with another property, but that he was talking about in the context of the tree roots. Is that Just right? the proximity yeah. to the yeah. tree. Yeah, the and there would be no, the tree. you know, they would be going down only six inches or something like that. Yeah. No, but he also he also said the previous, the driveway that's there does not have dense grade. And right. he said he they're did. not asking for dense grade. We don't need dense grade. No, and, and, and certain soils are stable enough to, right. you know. So it's not so like we're fun. not requiring them with, Courtney, it's not like we're not we're prohibiting them from putting there. We asked the question because we were afraid of the oak roots. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I, I just think, and it yeah. sounds like as long as we're flexible on it, um, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Are we ready? It wasn't our decision. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept as discussed. Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All those so opposed, moved. You can stay. Have a happy 4th of July, yeah. everyone. Who was the deal with Cypress? Why were there so many people for the Cypress one? That's fine. Oh,